Thomas, I stand here not only as a representative of the socialist appeal newspaper, as was announced, but also a representative of the international Marxist tendency, which is conducting the class struggle in over 30 countries. And what I will say is this, I'll open my remarks. While supporting wholeheartedly, and I think that the last speaker put his finger on it, the demand that the best way to assist the people in the Ukraine is to conduct an implacable struggle against our own reaction to the government in Britain. That is true. But the struggle against fascist reaction in the Ukraine must have an international character. And therefore, I'll pledge myself right now, arising from this meeting this evening, tomorrow morning we will instruct all the sections to get moving and to begin this, the construction of an international class campaign, of the international labor movement in solidarity with the workers of East of the, the Ukraine against the risk of reaction in that country. Now, 25 years ago, when the Soviet Union fell, the defenders of capitalism promised us what? A wonderful future of peace, of prosperity and, of course, democracy. 25 years later, not one stone upon another is left of those predictions. Francis Fukuyama threw in his, his, his little uh, contribution, not just the end of socialism, they said, the end of communism, they said, but the end of history. Well, history is not ended. It's come back with, with, with a virulence and with a violence and a vengeance which was difficult to predict, I think, just a few years ago. We don't have to just look at the UK, look at Yugoslavia. You see all the horrors attendant on nationalism, and by the way, nationalism is poison. There's too many people on the left flirting and messing around with nationalism. Nationalism is poison, and you see that everywhere that it raises its, its, its head. In the case of the Ukraine, it isn't just the Ukraine, by the way. When the Soviet Union fell, and let's be clear about this, there was not a single atom of progressive nature of the collapse of the Soviet Union. What's been the result? You say what you like about the old Soviet Union. But people had jobs, people had houses, people had health. In the Ukraine also, there was not this crazy fascism, this division of the, of the people along purely reactionary. It did not exist or existed in a very minor sense. What do you have now? Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, war after war, not just there, but look at the Caucasus, people killing themselves and so on. For what? To defend the interests of monstrous, reactionary, capitalist oligarchies in every single case. And Ukraine is just the latest example of this monstrous phenomenon. What we have in the Ukraine, let's call a spade a shovel, is a white terror. It's a white terror. And what you have in the eastern and southern parts of the Ukraine is, and I would agree with uh, Comrade Boris uh, Kargalitsky, uh, although he didn't say it was a class movement, it is fundamentally a movement of the industrial working class of the south and the east which are fighting to defend their interests against this monstrous offensive of fascism. And by the way, how lucky we are comrades and friends, how lucky we are to live in a democracy. How lucky we are that our government and the United States and the NATO and the common market pursues a progressive democratic policy, as in the Ukraine. I won't repeat what Boris Kargalitsky said. It is monstrous that any so-called democratic government should accept the, the regime of Poroshenko in any sense, shape, or form as a legitimate democratic government. Here is a legitimate democratic government that is trying to persuade the citizens of the east and south of the country with the democratic friendly argument of bombs, flames, machine guns, murders, a white terror which these people are attempting to defend themselves from. Now surely, I would agree with every other speaker here today, it is an elementary question. It's an elementary duty of the labor movement not to be confused by this question or that question. We stand four square in defense of workers everywhere that are fighting to, to defend their interests, their living standards, their jobs, their democratic rights against uh, repression. I believe 
that at bottom, and by the way, let's call a spade a, a shovel. I agree entirely with what Boris, Boris said. It is confusing the issue, frankly, to say, well, it's Russian speakers versus Ukrainian speakers. I don't accept this. I believe that the great majority, I've got some experience of both Russia and the Ukraine. I know these people. For the whole of their history, they were fraternal bonds, firm fraternal links between the workers of the Ukraine and, the, and Russia and the rest of the Soviet Union, but particularly Russia and the Ukraine. And the proof of this is as follows. On three occasions, the government, the reactionary gang in Kiev, sent the army against the people in the east, the insurgents, the rebels in the east. And on three occasions, they failed. Why? Because on each occasion, the soldiers rebelled. The Ukrainian soldiers mutinied. They said, we don't have anything to do with this. There was one scene on the television of an armored car where the people were arguing with the people inside the armored car. The soldier jumps up and says, I'm against all this. And he jumps off. And the others joined it. Or three years. The reason why now they're uh, sticking to Putin is very simple because the regime in Kiev, this democratic regime supported by the American, American imperialists, which, by the way, let's be clear about it, is the most reactionary counter revolutionary for, force in the planet. These guys are uh, uh, f forming, have formed, a so called national militia which consists purely of the organized fascist gangs put into uniform and sent against the civilian population of the East. This business about the East, they're all Russian agents, you see. They're all agents of Putin, they're marionettes of Putin. Well, if that is the case, I can't understand the conduct of the, of the government in Moscow. They were talking about a Russian invasion. Russia is going to invade, Russia is going to, where's the invasion? With 40,000 troops on the border, they have done nothing. While the people in the East are being bombed and killed and forced into submission. Where's the Russian agents? Where's the, where's the place? It's a complete damnable. If I were to criticize, it's not my business to criticize the Russian oligarchy, but if I were to criticize the Russian oligarchy, it's not because they're intervening too much. It's because they're not intervening at all. That's the fact of the matter. That's the fact of the matter. And therefore, the whole, the whole, the whole argument falls by its, by its own weight. Now, what's the solution? Let's come to the point. You see, it is good that we fight against fascism, and that's all, that's uh, elemental. But is that the roots of the problem, comrades and friends? Is it really? Is the form of government really the, 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 the roots of that? Is the national question the roots? I say no. The tragedy of the people of the Ukraine is identical with the tragedy of the people of Russia itself. And that tragedy has got a name, and the name, let's call a spade or shovel. Why, why is the left afraid of, of, of using this language? The problem is the capitalist system itself. The problem is the abolition of the planned economy, the movement in the direction of capitalist chaos, robbery, thievery, the rule by oligarchs. That's the problem in the Ukraine, comrades and friends. By the way, oligarchs who speak Ukrainian and oligarchs who speak Russian. The problem is the oligarchy. I think most workers in the Ukraine understand this. And therefore, I would put submit that the only genuine solution to this problem must be on class lines, on socialist lines, on lines which can unite the Ukrainian people, the workers in the first instance, and the other Ukrainian oppressed peoples, on class lines in the fight against this criminal oligarchy which brought the, the Ukraine, a potentially prosperous nation, which should have no problem whatsoever, to a situation of abject beggary, semi-starvation, suffering, unemployment, unimaginable, obscene inequality, obscene wealth on the other. That's the, 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 the basis of it. And therefore, let's finish on, on one note. I think it is high time that the left, yes, on the question of the Ukraine, we will support this campaign 101%. But should we not be taking this one step further? Isn't it about time that the left stop this abject retreat before the market, capitalism, and the rest of it, and recover the true principles of socialism, of Marxism, of Leninism, of the Russian Revolution, and proletarian internationalism, which ultimately represent the only possible solution to the problems facing the workers of the Ukraine, Russia, and the entire world? 